Hi folks, welcome to another episode of I Want to Know, the show dedicated to our government, the people involved in our government, and how our government ticks. I'm honored today to, be, uh, to have Rosa DeLauro, who represents the 3rd Congressional District, joining me today. Thank you so much for all your time. It's a pleasure. I love your building. This is fabulous. Yeah, it's we're a, very proud of that. It's an original one-room schoolhouse. Here. It is. So and we beautiful. spent a lot of time and effort, and yeah. uh, it's a labor of love mm -hmm. getting this fixed You're up. here. Um, so there's so much to talk about. Okay. Um, why don't we just start briefly about you. Okay. Um, you've been in Congress since 91. Right. Um, you've seen a lot mm -hmm. in those times. Mm -hmm. um, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. There. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. It's, uh, uh, well, first of all, I feel blessed to have the, the position that I do. I love serving in the House of Representatives. But, you know, when I think about, you know, my own background, I am uh, the daughter of an immigrant family. Uh, and they could only dare dream that their daughter would serve in the United States House of Representatives. How proud they are. Uh, my dad came uh, when he was 13 years old from Italy, and he couldn't read or write the language. And his, uh, his schoolmates and his teachers laughed at him. He left school for formal education in the seventh grade, went on to serve uh, his community, his country, in the military, uh, and uh, on the city council in New Haven. And my mom... Uh, uh, who completed high school in the evening, and she worked in the old sweatshops in New Haven. And it just, she would have me meet her there after school, and I, you know, there was method to that madness, uh, and uh, it was a dirty, awful place uh, uh, to be. And you saw women bent over sewing machines trying to pump out dresses as fast as they could. A uh, hazardous environment. Hazardous environment, and, uh, 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 you know, and she would say to me, take the opportunity for an education so that you don't have to do this. So the great sacrifices of, of, uh, of, of my family have allowed me uh, to be able uh, to serve in the House of Representatives. So I'm, uh, you know, and you never forget where you come from. You never forget your Become, It's who you are. It's who you are. It's, it's true. And I, you know, I'm often asked by the press, what motivates you, Congresswoman Delora? Why do you take up the issues that you do? Why do you um, vote the way you do? Um, and it, it, it's not the wonderful years that I've spent in the House of Representatives. It is growing up in an Italian Catholic household. Mm -hmm. That's where your, my sense of values comes from. And your sense of optimism as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, and so throughout your life, you know, your focus has been, you know, working families. Mm -hmm. And I know you're involved with a bunch of committees in Washington mm -hmm. regarding working families. Why don't you just tell me a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Uh, I sit on the Appropriations uh, uh, Committee, and obviously it's a committee that appropriates resources, money, uh, for uh, certain uh, areas, for programs, uh, et cetera. Uh, and I sit on two of the subcommittees. Uh, one that I chair uh, deals with all of the uh, labor, the jobs issues, education, uh, health care issues. It's labor, health, human services, and education. And then the other subcommittee I serve on is agriculture. Uh, and there are all of the nutrition programs that the federal government is engaged in. So, uh, so with the health issues, uh, the uh, education issues that affect us, uh, people's daily lives, whether it's K through 12 or uh, 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 high school and college. Nutrition uh, in schools and uh, food programs. Absolutely. Schools. It's about the school lunch program, school breakfast programs, the farmer's markets, um, all those uh, in addition to uh, 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 the, the funding that the federal government does to states uh, that gets passed on to our school districts uh, for elementary school, for preschool, uh, Head Start, uh, including and in going up to uh, the, the, the tax incentives that we provide to, uh, to families to be able to afford their, uh, uh, able to, afford their, their to send their children to college. Um, you know, so you, that's a good segue into a couple of questions I had. Sure. Um, one was the, the child care tax credit, yes. which I know yeah. you've worked hard on. Sure. Um, why don't you just tell us a little oh, bit? Oh, I, 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 I would love to. The child tax credit is the uh, largest uh, commitment of, of federal resources uh, to uh, helping families uh, and to help families to get out of poverty. And uh, uh, today, uh, the one-third of the children who would be eligible for a child tax credit uh, do not receive it. Why? because their families do not make enough money. Who are their families? Veterans. They are 
of, of families that have a large number of young children. Minimum wage workers can't avail themselves of because this. Because they earn too little? Because they earn too little. To Those be are able the people to, that need these that, systems. Exactly. You've said it so right. So, uh, and I'm very excited about this uh, because what uh, uh, I have uh, legislation uh, which I partnered with uh, with my colleague from Washington State, Suzanne Del Beni, in the Senate, uh, Senator uh, Sherrod Brown, oh, Senator sure, Bennett. Uh, uh, they are the sponsors of the bill there. It's called the American Family Act. And what it does, it expands the reach of the child tax credit. So that it, it says that um, it's a f fully refundable so that uh, uh, every a, a, a low income family, low income family can take advantage of it. So we capture uh, one third of those children uh, who are uh, not now eligible, but who would be eligible. And then we expand it uh, uh, to families with children who are over uh, six years old. Mm -hmm. we, we extend the, uh, uh, the, the credit to $3,000. For families who have children under six, it would be $3,600. And obviously there are uh, our income uh, levels and uh, that get phased out, uh, you know, with families who are making over one hundred fifty or $180,000 sure. a year. So. Especially during, you know, the era of COVID, which we're in, unfortunately, uh, mm -hmm. it shows, you know, it increases the disparities between the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. And people that are that have higher income have different means than mm -hmm. the people who are at mm -hmm. lower income of the cities mm -hmm. when it comes to you know, families need to work, but their kids can't go to school. Mm -hmm. um, but it also captures, uh, Dan, uh, uh, middle-class families as well, the way it, it, it is structured. Uh, so that, I mean, quite honestly, uh, you know, today they allow for families, you, you know, members of Congress would be allowed to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that, that what we need to do is to get to those middle class families that are hurting, to lower income families, uh, so that uh, we can help to really, help people lift themselves out of poverty so that they're able to take care of uh, the nutrition issues, to be able to get food, to be able to deal with housing uh, that's affordable, and so forth, to take care of their health care needs and not have to rely on the, uh, on, the, on the federal government. And then, so then let's also, I know you've worked on the cost of higher education as well. Yes, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. From, you know, what, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's a major problem. Well, it is. Uh, you know, um, uh, what we need to do is to, uh, 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 you know, one of the wonderful things uh, about what the federal government has done is uh, uh, to m make it possible for the children of middle class families to be able to go to college, to go to school. Um, and that we do through, uh, you know, the tax code, through, you know, tax relief of what people can uh, deduct. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is to uh, make sure, for instance, that if, if you're going to look at uh, 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 community colleges, uh, and this goes back a, a ways, you know, with uh, President Obama said, let's make community colleges free. Free, right. You know, so that we extend the reach of, of the, uh, the, of, uh, the opportunity right. to get an, an education. And those, I think, and I also say, though, it's important to understand, you know, 70% of the people in the United States do not have a four-year college degree. And that's it, okay. Uh, what we need to do is invest in, and what my committee does, is let's have, invest in apprenticeship programs. Let's in, invest in working with uh, um, uh, 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 industry, which we do. I th you know, I think about, uh, uh, you know, Sikorsky or Pratt & Whitney or so forth. They have internship programs and they collaborate with community colleges so that they help to design a curriculum in which youngsters can go through that do not want to go to a four-year college. We ought to make it easier for those who do, but those who don't, they Learn have the that, skills that, that get necessary. the skills that are necessary in order for them to succeed. And that is a problem for this region, for Connecticut. That's right. So, you, know, I, you know, there is the need, but we don't have the skill set. That's right. And it's about also, I, I partner 
uh, so many uh, 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 partner with manufacturing. Workforce uh, collaboration. Uh, that's right. And right. with, um, I, I know, for instance, uh, that we're at, at, at Gateway, they are uh, working to train utility managers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and also uh, with the community colleges are working to deal with uh, insurance claims adjusters so that uh, you know, there is a pathway for everyone uh, to realize their own dreams and their aspirations uh, and to have a good paying job so that they can take care of their family. You know, education, I, I just have to say this. No, sure. Education is really, uh, it, it, it is the key, you, you know, to your future. Well, it benefits society and it benefits right. the individual yeah. as well. You know, you know, as I said, my, my mother said to me, Take the opportunity to get an education, because when education, there's, it's not about your gender, it's not about your socioeconomic uh, 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 Status, condition, yeah. it's not your religion, it's none of those things. It is about your God-given talent, and that we need to provide uh, the kinds of environment and the resources that allow youngsters to reach their God-given talent and to be able to succeed. And knowledge is power as well. That's right. You know. And that's, that's the role of, of, of government that can play a role in all of that, which is why, as I said, you know, where uh, the Congress is a place for opportunity, uh, to provide uh, uh, opportunity, to help create that opportunity of, of for you know, for people to get a better chance at a better life. Well, it's interesting you say that, you know, because one of my questions was immigration. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's been a crisis at the border um, mm. of people, um, you know, there's been a policy mm -hmm. that this administration has put in place, separating children mm. from their families in order to discourage immigration, um, people um, being held in Mexico, um, not being, having the opportunity to um, make their case for asylum. And these are people that are looking for opportunities, as you're speaking mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So can you speak to that, what, sure. what our policy has been, you know, mm -hmm. the effect it's had sure. on our families, right? Yeah. Well, look, as I said, and you know that I am the daughter of an immigrant family. We all are. Who came to, Most of you us know, are, to right? seek a better, you know, a better life for, uh, and uh, so, uh, and you know, the immigrant experience is a very difficult one. We often romanticize it in our culture today, but it's very difficult for people. It's difficult, you know, for my community uh, and discriminated against, etc. Uh, so uh, I have that as a backdrop. But overall, I, and I, I want to address the issues at the border because uh, I have firsthand knowledge there, but overall we need to reform our immigration system. A pathway uh, to citizenship. That's right. And it needs to be comprehensive and it n should not be used as a political tool to divide people. Or a weapon. That's right. You've said it well. So it, at the border, it is unconscionable uh, what's happened at the border. Uh, the committee that I chair has the responsibility for unaccompanied children. and. We are obligated with a child who comes unaccompanied. They uh, then become part of, 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 of the system. And the goal is to get them to be, uh, 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 to link them up with either family who are here uh, or sponsors that can take them, uh, uh, you know, take them on. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened at the border and uh, is Deliberately, and I don't know if you, in the, in the last few days in the news, it came out that um, uh, uh, the Attorney General. Manu uh, oh. No, Sessions. Uh, right, right. right. When, Sessions. When Sessions, New York Times has had an article for everybody if they would like to look into that, it. That, that's right. And the Deputy, Jeff Sessions. Uh, uh, Jeff Sessions, and the Deputy, I believe, Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, they plotted and said, Anyone who comes, and if they come with their child, separated. they are to be separated. Uh, think about it. Children are precious. Right. You know, and that you rent them from their families. And I went to, uh, to Brownsville, Texas, to McAllen, and um, I saw the children in cages. I did. This was not made up. And 
with a very flimsy uh, mylar covering. Uh, actually, Congressman Jim Himes and myself went where they're first taken in, um, and uh, they're in these rooms which are very cold. And you've got, you're in, you're in Texas or they come from Mexico, you've got children in shorts and little t-shirts. And we, we, we saw them, and what we first saw in a room was this sheet of, of mylar. And then all of a sudden it began to move. <laughs> and from underneath these kids, really, kids, five, six, seven years old, uh, on bare floors, on, uh, you, you, it was, we were stunned. Uh, and, you know, I have a, um, my um, grandson, uh, uh, I have three grandsons, two are uh, adopted, uh, one from uh, Guatemala and the other from uh, Uzbekistan. And, uh, and most of the children that I saw in these cages uh, were from Central America, uh, including Guatemala. And as I toured that place, I, I looked at the, these young boys that, you know, with their beautiful dark skin and their, their dark hair, and I could see my grandson, Teo, uh, in their faces. Mm -hmm. uh, and to think about, now these children were separated from parents. They didn't know where their parents were. Traumatizing. Traumatized. Their parents didn't know where they were. And as it turned out, the system had no way of matching them up. So we had the way of taking, ripping them apart, but not, not matching not, them up. Anymore. Not matching them up. So until there, there was a court case that said you had to, to find them. out where their parents were. And there, today, and I don't make this up, some of these children will never be reunited with their families. That's a heartbreak. Mm -hmm. That's a heartbreak. You don't do that uh, to... Uh, uh, to families and these kids who would cry, parents who were crying desolate that didn't know where their kids were. Uh, and we met some of the mothers there that, you know, just were j just crying. You know, if they had a chance to talk, to find their child, to talk to them, uh, that, you, you, you know, they did not know when they would ever be reunited with their kids. So is there the possibility, is there a realistic possibility that we're going to find common ground and actually come up with some sort of policy, um, you know, a pathway to citizenship? Yes, well, we, we, we have to do that. Yeah. And, you know, I go back a few years because it was in the Senate and where you had, uh, you know, somebody like a John McCain, somebody like a Pat Leahy, you know, different perspectives, different points of view, who came up with an immigration bill right. that they supported. The House of Representatives uh, under Paul Ryan would never take it up. They just would never take it up. We have to get back to, as your word was a good one, it's not a weapon, but this is, uh, uh, you, you know, how do we come to some common ground on uh, comprehensive immigration reform? The issue of the border is different in this case, is that there is, by law, if a child comes unaccompanied, we have to uh, uh, accept that child and find housing. And find well, find their their their, their sponsors. Right. There are sponsors here. Oftentimes, they have family here, mm -hmm. and that's what we have not. We've taken a very very long time to uh, to get them to be with their families. Wow, um, so much to talk about. So much mm -hmm. to cover. Um, why don't we talk about the economy real quick? Sure. You know, during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, we have the... Oh, my gosh. You know, COVID relief. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, how are we going to move forward with that? Well, look, I, 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 in, in, in all fairness, we provided a three... Uh, uh, relief packages. Which we, yeah, we did talk about that we, briefly, but. Right, but, it, but the, the three relief packages were uh, passed and are into law, uh, and they were passed on a bipartisan basis. Right. And wh wh where did, wh wh where direction did it take us in? With, with regard to health, it was about testing and uh, contact tracing uh, and treatment, about vaccines and therapeutics. Uh, about manufacturing. How the uh, vaccine, how an eventual vaccine will actually that's, be distributed. That's right. 
That's right. We have provided funding for that. We provided funding. My committee provided $280 billion to these various areas in education and labor and jobs uh, and in health. Uh, uh, so we did pass this. We provided funding uh, for businesses. Uh, and so that businesses would not have to furlough people, that they could apply for a loan. Uh, and uh, uh, and, and at, at the outset, we found that what was happening was only going to the bigger businesses right, right. and not small. But we Banks came back. Banks made a lot of money, but they were able to, they made money off of the, loan, the larger scale That's loans, right? right, right. And not but, the smaller scale loans. But then we went back and we said, okay, we need to do something for small businesses. Right. And we were able to do that. We helped the airline industry mm -hmm. to get them back on their feet again. And now, because... Uh, and, and Senator McConnell, who says we have to take a pause when we come to the, this, pa this final package. It's not a final package. We may need to have more you know, money for relief. The, he said we need to take a pause, but the virus hasn't taken a pause. Right. So that people are still in dire straits. Uh, and I, I might also add what I didn't talk before. We brought relief to people who were furloughed who lost their jobs through no fault of their own. Now, those benefits have run out. There are today, Dan, over 40 million people who are unemployed. And the benefits have, have run, run out. out. Have run out, right. So what are they to do to take care of their family? We are looking at people in their cars waiting in line for food. Right. We are the richest country in the world. We have an abundance of food, and people are going to bed hungry. hungry. It's wrong. What are we, child care. We are about to lose, we have, a, 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 in, in, in Connecticut, uh, you know, thousands of, 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 of slots. That, just don't use the word slots, it's thousands of children are not going to be able uh, to, uh, to, to be in child care. Our economy will not reopen if parents don't believe they have a safe place to put their child. Right. And that's what's happening If they're worried about housing now. themselves, if they're worried about food insecurity, their food, housing their insecurity. housing, evictions, mortgages, all of that is at issue. Uh, and I introduced uh, $50 billion dollars to stabilize the childcare industry. It's part of the negotiation right. because I have been a leader on uh, uh, the working families uh, in, 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 in the House, uh, uh, paid sick days, paid family and medical leave. This is all legislation uh, that is on the cusp of being passed. It's all legislation that I have introduced, including equal pay for equal work for women. And uh, honestly, New administration, I believe we have the opportunity to get these, these bills passed. And I will ask President Biden for one of the first bills that he signed would be equal pay for equal work for women, okay. which is where we need to go. That's great. That's you know? fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so we have five more minutes. Okay. Um, Time goes by quickly. It does. It does. You know, and you're so easy mm -hmm. to talk to. Right. Um, what other legislation are you looking, are you looking forward sure. to working on? And then mm -hmm. um, what are you most hopeful for, for our future, mm -hmm. and what are you most proud of? Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I have, uh, as I said, I'm blessed. I, I love what I do, uh, and I, I work in an institution which is greatest strength is its potential. Its potential to make a difference in people's lives. Right. I've had the opportunity, we saw past the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. Um, uh, I, I, the, uh, I was, in 20 years, we had not done anything about gun violence uh, uh, prevention research. Uh, I put $50 million into the appropriations bill for doing that. I've talked about equal pay for uh, equal work for women, paid sick days, paid family leave, uh, 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 child care, uh, schedules that, that work. I have led the fight to stop the offshoring of our jobs overseas, uh, and that occurs within our trade agreements. Uh, and I made sure that uh, the Marine One helicopter, which is the presidential helicopter, which we've produced at Sikorsky right. since 
Dwight Eisenhower that that was brought back to that the United States, right. those production lines back here and saving those jobs. I've increased the funding for the National Institutes of Health in the last four years, $11 billion for discovery to cure. I am an ovarian cancer survivor. I care deeply about the research that allows us to be able uh, uh, to cure diseases uh, and, and, and uh, to bring people relief in that, uh, in, 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 in that area. You, so, you have worked tirelessly you know, for research for diabetes research. That's right. Alzheimer's research. Right, and to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. Right, right. You know, because if you've got the, the, the cure, but you can't afford it, what use is it? Right. You know, and so therefore, let's bring those costs down. Let's make sure people have uh, health care, universal uh, uh, health care that they can that they can afford. And I've worked in that area with a piece of legislation called Medicare for America. Uh, and so enormously proud of, of these efforts. And why I am so proud is because these are the issues that are now part of the negotiation in the HEROES Act, it's uh, this child tax credit that we first started talking about. Uh, Vice President Biden, it is part of his tax policy. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only the HEROES bill, but that's what he wants to do uh, when he is elected president. That's exciting. You it know, is. I've always wondered why healthcare should be tied to your job, tied to your employment. We're the only industrialized country in the world that does it this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but look, what we can do is to achieve universal health care, and we can say if you're, you're getting your, your and 100 and I believe 165 million people get their health care through their employment. So if you are satisfied with it, you have a choice. You can keep what you have, or you can move over to you know Medicare. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you do move over, that your employer. Uh, will uh, pay a percentage of 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 of, of their uh, 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 profits to finance to help to finance that. Very excited about Medicare for America, uh, uh, with no deductible no deductible costs, uh, premiums on a sliding scale, lowers the cost of prescription drugs, uh, uh, takes into consideration the. Uh, disabilities community. Uh, so I'm hopeful that that's another area which I'm going to try to push a Biden administration on uh, to, uh, uh, to take on. Well, you know, I wish you all the best. Thank um, you. Let me just tell you uh, how much I appreciate all your dedicated hard work up in Washington. It's a difficult place to be, mm -hmm. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I appreciate all your public mm -hmm. service. Thank you. And I, I say again, I, I really, the, the the strength of the Congress is in its potential. Right. Think about historically what it has done. Medicare, Medicaid, it has the, the as I said, the ability for working parents to send their kids to school, civil rights, a GI Bill, the Affordable Care Act. A lot of good work. It has, right, and they, this was done when I wrote my book uh, the least among us waging the battle for the vulnerable. Right. I found that this social safety net was created by Democrats and Republicans who understood the challenges that we face today and who came together to make it happen. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to continue to do. All right. That's a wonderful place to okay. end. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, so for, your much time. for the conversation. Love it. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining me for another episode of I Want to Know. Um, thank you to Rosa DeLauro, and we will see you again soon with another uh, wonderful guest.